Hi, welcome back to the PC Final Frontier YouTube channel. Today, we're going to discuss differential diagnosis between osteoporosis, osteomalacia, osteogenesis imperfecta, and osteochondritis desiccans. Let's get right into it. We start with osteoporosis. Now, what is osteoporosis? It is a porous bone. What does porous mean? It means that the bone is losing its normal amount of proteins and minerals, which is why it becomes spongy. If we take this example here, this is a normal bone, which has its complete minerals and proteins versus this as a bone that does not have it, which is why it becomes like that and leads to osteoporosis. Over time, this bone can become as shown in the figure here, known as a codfish vertebrae. Let's get into the factors of why that happens, okay? There can be a lot of reasons that lead to osteoporosis, which could be hormonal deficiencies, it could be age-related as there is degeneration in the body that can lead to osteoporosis. There could be nutritional deficiency, which is a great deal um, that could lead to osteoporosis, autoimmune disease, and celiac disease. Celiac disease is the one where you your immune system has gluten sensitivity, which is why because of gluten, you might have some immune reaction um, in your body. And a simple fix to that is to have a gluten-free diet. The most common areas of affection for osteoporosis are in the order of mention here, our vertebral column is the most common in old adults, femoral neck, distal radius and wrist and humerus. Now, this is why I showed here that when there is shortening of the vertebral height because of osteoporotic bone, it could lead to a fracture, it could lead to just shortening of the bone altogether. Let's see what cl clinical presentation looks like. Now, like I said, it could, lead the short it could lead to shortening of the bone, which could make you lose your height over the period of time. This can also lead to a stooped or a hunched posture, like shown in the figure here, which is simply because of loss of the vertebral body height. How do we diagnose um, osteoporosis? We diagnose osteoporosis with bone mineral density test and it is uh, qualified as a T-score for which if you have osteopenia, the score would be between one and 2.5 standard deviation and anything above 2.5 standard deviation is qualified for osteoporosis. Now, what is osteomalacia? Osteomalacia is a condition that happens because of weakening of the bones due to the deficiency of vitamin D. D vitamin D deficiency can happen in children or in young adults and it, it varies and it's most common in children actually. It happens in, when it happens in children, it's called as rickets. There is widespread pain in your body, mostly in your anti-gravity and big joint muscles, which leads to proximal muscle weakness, deformity, any anti-gravity motions that goes into functional activity, which is raising from the chair, climbing stairs, performing transfers from sit to stand, having a normal gait is all a difficulty when you have osteomalacia or soft bones. If you see right here in the picture, this is a classic example of rickets that happens in children, again, affection of the long bones, usually the femur in rickets is a very common affection area. That was all from osteomalacia. Now, what is osteogenesis imperfecta? Those are fragile bones due to an inherited auto in autosomal dominant gene disorder. This happens at the collagen level where there is imbalance between the bone deposition and bone reabsorption. Now I want to explain a little bit about what is a cortical and what is a cancellous bone, okay? Cortical bones are long bones usually. The thick outer surface of a bone is the cortical bone. Cortical bone comprises of 80% of our body weight. 
they are stiffer, stronger than the cancellous bone. What is a cancellous bone? The cancellous bone is usually pre present at the edges of the long bones. And they basically make like a bridge to help the cortical bone. I'm going to show you here in the picture of this part here. Say this is a femur. This part here is going to be our cancellous bone versus the shaft of the femur, if we can say so, would be our cortical bone. Now, cancellous bone is already a little bit softer than the cortical bone. It is not very strong as the cortical bone. What happens in osteogenesis imperfecta is because of the bone deposition and reabsorption imbalance, these bones become thin over the period of time. If you would think cancellous bone would become thinner first, before the cortical bone. Now, cancellous bone is literally here giving you the bridge between your socket here and the shaft, which is the cortical bone. Now, when that becomes weak, it's going to lead to fractures, deformity of the weak bearing bones. Let's get to now what is osteochondritis desiccans. Osteochondritis desiccans happens when the bone at the cartilage dies due to lack of blood supply. If you can see in the picture here, when there is lack of blood supply to the point where the bone meets the cartilage, there could be a problem where you would see that this dysfunctional unit here could be in trouble because of having bone and cartilage break. If that doesn't have a good blood supply, there's going to be a break in the bone fragment or in the cartilage and it could fall loose, which is why this would cause pain in the areas of affection. The most important areas of affection for osteochondritis desiccans is the medial femoral condyle, the femoral head, and the humeral capitulum in the elbow joint. Most common this condition happens between in children and, and adolescent between the age of 10 and 20 years of the individuals that are involved in high level jumping, running, uh, agility drills on a repetitive basis because their bones are still growing and do not have the strength to take such force. Sometimes this leads to loss of blood supply leading to a condition called as osteochondritis desiccans. I hope these conditions were easily explained and now you will remember them for sure. Thank you.